Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to our professional development session. Today, we're going to have a great presentation from Ms. J on um, the life of etiquette. Uh, so uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce Ms. J and as always, Dr. Wolf. Well, thank you, Lindsay. Thank you very much. Ms. J, thank you for spending uh, your lunch hour with us here to share a little bit about etiquette. Thank you. And before we get going, I'm going to make a couple of quick announcements here. Um, one is thank you to all the high school students who have been able to participate. We know that school is tough. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of disappointments with proms and different types of things, but hopefully you're being creative and being able to enjoy those things. Again, this series is designed for you high school students that are pretty much seniors and juniors and even collegiates in their early part of their career to gain valuable and critical information from the experts. Earlier in the month, which we have all of these recorded on youtube.powerupitmn.com, there is all of the, the resumes, uh, set workshops. We talked a little bit about uh, not only just resumes, but LinkedIn, online profiles, and your personal pre your, pers your, your personal professional preferences. See, that's how it goes. You know, everybody's entitled to their, their faux pas. We also did a fantastic workshop on resiliency that you must check out. Dr. Wilson did an incredible job. Coming up over the next couple of weeks, we'll have uh, Mr. Mark Skipper, who's going to teach you how to fine-tune and hone your 60-second elevator speech. How do you talk about you? All the skills that you have, maybe the classes or the projects that you've worked on, even in high school, what can you do to package that to sell your image and your brand and, and your work to a future employer? Uh, and then after that, we're gonna have a collegiate panel and many other topics on how you know how to, to work with yourself and um, become a better person, better prepared for the work world. So now that I've kind of stumbled a little bit through that, we hope that each and every, every one of you enjoy um, the rest of the school year. We're looking forward to seeing you back every Tuesday and Thursday at 11.30 a.m. through May, every Tuesday and Thursday through May, to learn and absorb this information that we're providing for you on behalf of the Power Up IT organization, Minnesota State, IT Center of Excellence, and many other organizations. So. Uh, without any further ado, it's actually my pleasure to introduce Miss J. Miss J has done an incredible body of work within the community, uh, a wide variety and a wide range. I'm sure that she'll share with us a little bit about her background, what she does. But today we're going to focus in on you, the high school student, and how important it is for you to understand the importance of etiquette when you get into interpersonal situations such as uh, meeting employers or maybe looking or interviewing for the first time, potentially just getting prepared for a college interview. All these mm -hmm. things are very important in how you handle and, and manage your, your presence, right? So, and even how to dress, but I'm not going to get into all that. That's for the experts. Miss J, how are you doing today? I am well, and thank you for that introduction, Michael. Well, we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say, so I'm so do you want to take it away? I will take it away unless you have something else you'd like to say. Nope, I'm good. I want to hear from the expert too. I have a lot of things. Even as a you know, mature IT professional, it's still important. I learn something every time I hear somebody speak. So I'm very excited to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm excited as well. We do have a lot to cover. So we'll just get started. Hello everyone, I am Juliet Mitchell and because I've worked with so many teens over the years, I think saying Miss Juliet was just way too much to say and they shorten it and say Miss J. So that's how I became Miss J, the life etiquette expert. I have a company called the Life Etiquette Institute. It's a personal and professional development company focusing on business and social etiquette and career development. We're going to talk about what that, this whole etiquette thing is all about. From the handshake to the dining table, from the backpack to the briefcase, we teach people how to be for personal growth and career and life success. My motto, if you will, is manners are memorable because people remember what you do, what you say, and, what, and how you behave. So you should always 
put your best foot forward and claim your seat at the table. If you don't put your best foot forward, you might not even get a seat at the table. So we'll talk about that as we go along. Here are some high school students that I've worked with in the past. This was a, a work readiness group. And when I do work readiness training, professional etiquette is a part of that because the two are really not separate. You're not separate from yourself for whatever you do, there is a way to be in that situation. So those are some of the high school students um, having a mock interview with some local leaders and business persons. And you will be in one of those seats one day as well. I also do quite a bit of work with college students. So the, the one on your right, I believe on your right, is a group of students at Mankato State because you're gonna be dining, going out to lunch, going out to breakfast, dinner with people. So how to be at the dining table is important. So that was a professional dining experience. And on the other side was a internship group. I understand that many of you are gonna be looking for internships or your first job. So every year I go into a local bank, a regional bank actually, that have college students to come in for internship. So those are the things that I want you to know about me. If you have any questions, I understand a lot of you may not be able to chat right now because you're in school or doing other things, but if there's something you really want to know about me that I haven't shared with you, please feel free to uh, contact Power Up IT or contact me personally and I'll, I'll tell you more about me, okay? So let's move forward. We, again, we have a lot to cover in a short period of time, but I really want you to get this, so here we go. My objective for you today is to give you some tips, strategies, and techniques for success, for life success, with a, a lean toward the professional part of your life. But again, you are who you are, whether you're at work, whether you're at school, whether you're out. And so these tips and strategies and techniques can be applied anywhere in life. Some of the things we'll cover today is what is etiquette and why is it important? Building your personal capital. We'll look at establishing positive professional relationships, so just establishing relationships. And then I will leave you with some tips on professionalism in our virtual world, okay? So when you think about etiquette, what do you think about? What does it mean to you? A lot of people think about dining, being at the dining table, and being nice and kind and polite and having good manners, and that is true. But etiquette is on a continuum. It does include being nice, kind, and polite, but it also includes being civil and courteous and conscientious of other people. The other end of the continuum is etiquette include rules and laws and protocol. Think about these synonyms when you think about etiquette. Again, having good manners, being proper, polite and courteous, being respectful. Also, having codes of conduct, customs and guidelines, protocol, and yes, rules and laws. I know rules and laws are the part of, of etiquette that make you want to roll your eyes. Here's another rule that I have to obey. But, but hang in there for a moment, and I want you to, to really get why that's as important as being nice and kind and considerate. So you think about in life, the household rules and school rules and street rules and even food rules. There are seating rules when you go to a theater, you go to a concert, and of course, you know you got the flush. If somebody doesn't do that, that's going to be a problem. We have our dating rules, our email rules. Some people have broken the email etiquette rules and gotten fired or got themselves in trouble. Or you go into a meeting and you go in with inappropriate behavior, they may not invite you back. And of course, we have our work rule, and now we have COVID-19. Again, some of the rules and guidelines help us uh, be safe with each other. And of course, the being nice and kind help us to be in harmony with each other. We have to be in harmony with each other, have a respectful way of getting along, especially in the workplace. And then we have those things that keep us safe. All right. So think about it. In life, you're going to have those written rules. We call this the rule book. And we have those 
unwritten rules. So you're responsible for the written rules. If you're part of a club or an organization, your school, your college, your internship, you're going to be given a set of rules saying in order to work here and keep your job here, you have to do this, 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 and this. And you're responsible for it, even if you don't read the whole book. The unwritten rules, on the other hand, is about relationships. These are the rules or the guidelines or the expectations that people have to share with you. And they're usually going to share with you if they know you, they like you, they want to see you succeed. They will tell you, don't touch anybody's soda in the refrigerator. Bring your own lunch. And please don't bring tuna sandwiches to this work environment. Th those are those things that can make people either uneasy with you or really not want you to be around, but there's nothing in the rule book. So those relationships are going to help you to learn about those unwritten rules. All of that is a part of what I call life etiquette, the teaching on how to be in any situation. Okay. So think about it. Etiquette is, if you want to wrap all of this up, it's about respect, respect that you show for yourself, respect for other people, and respect for the world around you. So I have a question for you. If we did not have etiquette, a life etiquette, a way to be, what would the world be like? Just take a few seconds and picture in your mind if people did anything, went at anywhere, drove anywhere, partied all night long, came in the work when they wanted to be, disrespected everyone, what would the world be like? Okay, let's take a look. So if there was nothing at home, you ever had a fight with your brother or sister and your mother or dad pulling the hair out, say, stop it, it's too crazy in here. School, you're trying to learn and kids are all over the place on top of desk playing music, being disrespectful to the teacher. It's not going to happen. And then in the workplace, even though everyone is working here, the guy at the desk is like, I need some peace in here. There's too much going on. And of course, in society, if everyone just doing everything they wanted to do, it's going to be completely crazy. So a life without etiquette, if you thought about it, it could be pretty chaotic. So we have to have this way of being, this agreement on how we're going to come together and do life. So in moving forward, so what does it have to do with success? What does it have to do with me? I like this quote as we go into the other part of explaining how this impacts you in the work world. The swiftest way, and I know swift is a word that teenagers don't use, I'm going to say the fastest way to triple your success is to double your investment in personal development. Robin Sharma is a leader in the world of leadership in personal and professional development. And this quote is really true. So your being here today, your being a part of this program is your investment in your personal development. So there's two part of your person, the personal development that I'd like to touch on as we move into this thing that we call professional etiquette or manners in the workplace. So you're building your capital, and I don't mean the capital letter. I'm talking about capital as far as investment uh, in growth. Think about that kind of capital. So Michael mentioned earlier about your personal brand. So you're going to be working on that as well. And it is a part of what we're doing, but your personal brand is that thing that makes you stand out. It's that distinct piece about you. And a lot of people spend a lot of money and a lot of uh, time and investment in developing this is me and this is how I stand out. On the other hand, your social capital is about those connections that you make and that's often based on your manners, behaviors, and actions. Okay, so let me break it down a little bit more for you. I want to introduce three kinds of capital that you may not have thought about before. You have your cultural capital. That's who you are. When you were born, where you were born, your ethnicity, your, your cultural affiliation, that is inherently you. Then you bring to the table your human capital. These are the things that you are learning. I think most of you, or some of you watching this are in IT information technologies. And so you are learning how 
uh, to code, you'll learn how to troubleshoot, you'll learn how to follow systems. So when you come to the table, you bring in you, you bring in what you know and what you know how to do, but you are also bringing your social capital, those connections that you have with people. You're not separating a piece of you with the social capital. That's just expanding who you are and making you more valuable when you come to the table. So think about it. You're bringing all of this. Either you're going to be invited to the table, and if you're not, and when you come to the table, having that confidence is, this is who I am. I'm a woman. I'm an African-American woman. I'm an African-American woman with a college degree. I was raised in the South. A lot of that is part of my, my cultural capital. And then I know how to read, write, teach. That's part of my human capital. And then my social connections are those people who know me, like me, feel good about me, want to invite me to the table. All of that is going to get me to the table. Let me give you an example. This is a picture of my granddaughter. She and a friend of hers, she sent me a text one day and says, Granny, guess what? I went to the mountains. I went hiking in the mountains. So that's her and her friend hiking in the mountains. A couple of months later, a few weeks later, she sent me another text and said, Granny, guess what? I've been to the ocean. I went to the ocean. So she had the experience of going to the mountain, going to the ocean. Last summer, she had an experience of going fishing and biking with St. Paul police officers. So she's building on those social connections, which is going to help you get to the table. So a couple of things are going to happen. Your manners, behaviors, and actions are either going to open some doors for you, or they're going to close some doors. So those experiences that she has had has helped her to open doors. Now, maybe that's something inside of her that may get stirred up. Oh, I like the mountains. I like the ocean. I want to do something with marine biology. Who knows? But the point is that your opportunities and your experiences expand a lot of time because of your personal etiquette, your manners, behaviors, and actions, and how they show up. So, so Ms. J, does, does this really matter? You bet it matters. So looking at it from a professional standpoint, I also want you to look at it from a personal standpoint. And I give you some examples as we go along. It's going to affect your relationships. Had my granddaughter not had a trusting relationship with this young lady, she may not have ever gotten a chance to do some of the things and vice versa because they trade on and off. Same way I do with my adult friends as well. If I know you and I know you have good behavior and I know you're going to be respectful of where I'm taking you, I'm going to open up more opportunities and our relationships grow and I introduce you to somebody else and your relationships grow with that person. It's going to affect your productivity and your performance. Do you remember the slide a few slides ago and I had the the uh, young people in the classroom and some of them were trying to study and some of them were all over the place. If you're that person who wants to have good performance and get your homework done and get it done on time, that's your school productivity. When you enter the workplace, it's going to be the same thing. Can you work around chaos? If you can't, you're not going to be able to turn the goods into your employer. And then here's another part. It affects the, the bottom line. And the bottom line really is what you're trying to achieve. If you are in business, you're probably trying to make a difference in the world as well as earn money and pay all the people and all the expenses and, and develop. That's the bottom line. The bottom line in that relationship may be that you want it to be a long standing relationship. Maybe you want to get married. Maybe you want a business partner. Whatever that bottom line is, is what you're trying to achieve. And that relationship is going to dictate how that goes. And it also is going to affect your opportunities for personal growth and professional growth and development as well. In other words, if I invite you to the table, if I open the door for you, then you have more opportunities to try new things, to develop yourself, to learn more. So that's why manners matter, so that you are invited to the table. So the door is open to you to walk into the room. So it's really a lot about relationships, or I'm going to say all about relationships. You have the establishing part, the building, and the maintaining. 
my focus today in this seminar is the establishing and that would be really the introduction i got to kind of know you and do that groundwork first and then we're going to spend some more time together building that relationship and if we decide wow this is positive productive this is uh, affirming i want to keep this what are some of those things we need to do uh, with maintaining that relationship but that's another session for another day all right so in establishing relationships we're going to talk about the introduction i love this little guy here because he has put it all together are you that person when you're being introduced to somebody you go like oh no i'm gonna have to go in that room with all those people you bite your nails you twirl your hair you twiddle your thumbs so this little guy here he has the good he has the body posture head on he making eye contact the cutest smile who would not want that kid on their team okay so that first impression is what you see there in this kid so here are some tips going to help you with that first impression now here's a video and i hope that we um can see it i'm going to try to bring you into it this is about making a good first impression i just saw it this morning and it's just the cutest thing okay. hundreds of thousands of investors yeah. are getting their advice from motley That's fool stock good. advice well, two Pickerington teenagers are showing the world that first impressions do matter. The internet is going crazy over a tweet posted yesterday about the siblings first meeting with their baby niece. NBC4's Courtney Yoon has the story. Always be overdressed rather than underdressed, I guess. 18-year-old um, Grant Kessler says he just wanted to make a good impression on his newborn niece, Carter. I walked up to him like, Grant, what are you doing? And all he said was impressions matter. And I was like, oh. You know, the baby's not going to remember this. <laughs> He's like, she will. So his 16-year-old sister, Iris Kessler, snapped a pic of him while they were waiting at the hospital. If you see the picture, you can probably tell that I, I didn't actually know she was taking a picture at the time. And then she tweeted it, writing, my sister is about to have a baby, and my brother showed up to the hospital in a suit because first impressions matter. Grant kept the suit on all day, and I kept updating Twitter, and... It just kind of took off. People yeah, on the internet really loved it. Too. It's been shared over 100,000 times. I'm really glad he's getting the recognition for like being a good dude and trying to like <laughs> start everything off on the right foot, be respectable. Iris and Grant say it doesn't take a lot to make someone's day a little brighter and hope this can be a reminder of the importance of spreading positivity. Little things that don't even take that much time out of your day to do can make a lot of people happy, whether it's people directly like related to you or people all around the world. When Carter's older, I wanted her to like look back and look at those pictures of the day she was born and like see the like respect and the attention that she was getting that day. And I think me wearing a suit was a small part of that. In Pickerington, Courtney Yoon, NBC4. Okay, I am going to get back to our presentation. Okay, let me uh, see if I can do that. Top of the Okay, here we go. Are you with me? Yes, all right, great. So the reason why I showed that, I just saw it this morning and it was just the cutest thing that this young man went out of his way to present himself well for this infant. What employer does would not appreciate someone making that first impression that said, I went out of my way to show respect for you, respect for this meeting or for this class that I'm taking. So out of that video, who knows? This young, someone's gonna call and say, who is that young man and what is he all about? I think I want him on my team. What if he's into IT and, and power, power Up IT is looking for an intern this is the guy we want because he already shows us that he is respectful, that manners matter, and he knows it matters. So thank you for allowing me to show that, all right? So let's get to the introductions. We're gonna talk about the physical part of what happens. Now, hang in here with me because I know that our world is changing and the handshake is on hold for a moment. But when it comes back, I want you to be ready. I have spent years, literally years, working on the science and art of the handshake. And then COVID-19 happened. I had to kind of rethink that, but not. And I'm going to tell you why in a moment. So let's go over the handshake and the handshaking world. In the American business culture, that is part of that first greeting. You can get it right 
or you can get it wrong. People are not going to tell you, but they always are kind of assessing or sizing up to see how did that really go. So here are five tips to help you to have a really solid handshake. Let's start with the word solid. When people say solid, what does that really mean? When they say firm, what is firm? How firm is too firm? So I'm going to give you some tips to help you get that part right. If you would take your right hand and look at the little part between your thumb and your forefinger, that's your V, as I call it, your little webby part. Your web should go all the way to touch the other person's web. You should wrap your hands around theirs, and then that's going to make it palm to palm. If it's palm to palm, that's pretty solid. And think about a doorknob. I know we don't have a lot of doorknobs these days, but there are still doorknobs around. I think about a piece of fruit. The squeeze should be just enough to open that door or to squeeze that fruit to make sure it's not too mushy, that it's just right. So that's that solid, firm grip. The eye contact. Looking the person, you saw the little guy that in the um, picture a few slides back, he was looking at the person. You could look down, be shaking the hand, you can look up all around and you could twiddle your thumbs or just be real timid about it. Making that eye contact say, I am open and approachable. I want to see into you so you see into me. So making that eye contact is important. If it's appropriate, smile. The little guy didn't have a big grin, but he had the cutest smile. And I say, if appropriate, because sometimes you may meet a person under serious uh, circumstances, but they still are going to remember that first encounter. So you want to look pleasant. And if it's appropriate, you're going to smile. Use the appropriate greeting. Good morning. Good afternoon. How are you doing? That is, is appropriate. Not like, what's up? If it's casual, then you can go casual. But if it's business, you want to keep it professional. Here's a tip that a lot of people have gotten away from, and I'm telling you, it's so, so, so important. Uh, a guy, a, a leader in um, personal and professional development and relationships, Dale Carnegie said, the person's name is the sweetest sound, and it's so true. So when you meet someone, say their name. Give your full name, yes, first name and last name. I know you think it's going to be like overdone, but it makes a difference. It says that I'm open, I'm approachable, I have nothing to hide, and I want you to remember me. If you have a name that's unusual to say or have a different pronunciation, it's okay to educate that person about your name, but you can't be doing it with an attitude. Uh, I saw it was, I said my name was Shalanda, Tamika, it was um, Jaharia, whatever that name was, uh, Mary Louise, say it so the person can understand it and understand it clearly and use that person's name. So here's an example. My name is Juliette Mitchell. Hello, Mr. Er Mr. Jones. Eric Jones, so nice to meet you, Mr. Jones. My name is Juliette Mitchell. He is Mr. Jones until he tells me to call him Eric. If I go in, even a, being a more mature person, I'm usually going to go in using the person's Mr. or Miss until they tell me not to. Then the person can say, oh, call me Eric. Then that's okay. If he never says that, then stick with Mr. Jones, okay? All right, so if you're putting this all together, here's some, some pictures of some examples. Uh, face on, the smile, you see the body posture. I could be turned this way and shaking your hand. I'm not giving you a whole lot of me. Square on just shows respect for that other person and look at the grip there. Now, I told you we live in a different world now. There's before COVID-19, some people would bow and shake hands as you see there. In some cultures, there's the bow. America is a handshaking kind of business culture that is changing, but this has always been around and I've always included it in my work that everyone doesn't shake hands. And actually, there's three main reasons why people don't shake hands. They really could be sick and, or have some condition that's not, they don't want to get you sick, so they choose not to shake hands. They could do it for cultural or religious reasons or their hand could be damaged. Just because a man is 
or a guy or a male is big and scrapping and look all healthy or an athlete, it doesn't mean that that person can shake your hand. A matter of fact, I've had men before to say, oh my God, I damaged my hand. I'm sorry, I can't shake yours. They looked healthy and strong, but they could not do the firm grip. So you have to educate that person about that. And now with our COVID culture in America, we're not shaking hands because it's one of the guidelines. So you can always do the Wakanda bow. In either case, we make eye contact in the American business culture. And I understand that we're in a diverse world. So you have to decide for yourself, am I with someone that don't make eye contact? Should I try? Should I try not? Educating yourself about that is going to make a difference. But these tips gives you a starting point to say whether you should or not and how to do that. So thank you for listening to that. The next piece. So I got the physical part down, but I don't know what to say. Remember the nail biter and the hair twirler? I don't know what to do next. So you go in over to a corner and you hope that nobody approaches you or that you don't have to talk. If you don't have to talk or if you don't talk and engage, then they never get to know who you are. You never get to show your best self. So you may miss out an opportunity because you are uncomfortable. So what I'm going to give you right now is a formula for entering into that conversation or meeting people. Now I'm going to try this. I'm not a hand, uh, sign language expert, but I'm going to try. F O R M form. It's a formula for meeting people and connecting. So when you first meet someone, you're entering into a conversation they're going to want to know that basic or foundational or fundamental information about you. So what, who you are, where you're from, where you go to school, you don't have to give your address, but be open enough to give some, just starting off information. I like telling people that I'm a Southern girl. Some people may want to not share that and you don't have to, but what is that basic information to help us to get started? Okay organization what groups or organizations that do you belong if you register with power up it then you can say i'm a part of an organization called power up it and a natural flow is going to be well tell me more about it and that helps you to engage in that conversation the r is for recreation or rec what do you like to do for fun and leisure People want to know that you're well-rounded. If you are a self-professed nerd, like I have a tendency to be, people think, oh, this person is in books all the time and all they want to do is be on computers. Hey, there's some things I like to do. I like to walk. I like to read, love movies. So what is that thing you like to do for fun and leisure? You might make a connection there. And then the message when you leave that conversation what is that memory or that impression do you want in that person's mind what do you want them to know your message may be spoken or unspoken i have a spoken message and i didn't share this earlier because i wanted to share it now i believe that there's enough to go around in the world i believe there's enough food that no one needs to go hungry enough shelter that no one needs to go homeless and enough clothing that no one needs to go naked. It hasn't happened yet, but you, your younger generation will probably figure that out. So if that is my message, then you might say, hey, here's an opportunity to go to a shelter to pass out food. Here's an opportunity to work at Dress for Success or to give. So that message tells a person something about you. F-O-R-M, form, a formula for meeting and greeting and connections. And let me show you how the connections work. When we, if we were in a classroom, we would do this activity. I'm talking to Michael. Lindsay is standing to the side, maybe having a cup of coffee or something. And I'm telling Michael what I like to do. Oh, Michael, I love to travel and, and I'm interested in going to Africa. Matter of fact, there's a group going. Lindsay hears when Michael and I finish the conversation, she might come up to me and say, I heard you say, and then we start the conversation. You see those connections in the diagram? That's how those connections are made. And that's how doors open for you. Okay. So if you were, we were doing this in a classroom and I encourage you to take these tips and practice, practice, practice. I know it may sound kind of 
I'm think of a word, hokey is what I say, or kind of lame. That, do I have to practice this? Yes, you do. People, business uh, people pay tons of money to be coached, to brand themselves, to um, shore up their personal development so that when they walk in the room, they are comfortable, confident, and self-assured. So take some time to practice this so it doesn't feel odd and uncomfortable when you're in this situation. And those of you who are in part of Power Up IT, this is going to happen for you hopefully real soon as you seek internship opportunities. Okay? So all of what we're doing here is working on your personal and professional development, and some people call them soft skills. That's those personal things about you that helps you to interact effectively. You can interact with people, but is it effective? Does it lend to your um, building positive relationships? So you want to make sure that interaction is effective and that you're in harmony with other people. That's what this is going to help you with. So I've done a lot of, of research and study and, and uh, interviewing at different employers to say, what, 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 what should people come to the table with? And the five top soft skills and this professional etiquette is going to help you to do that is build relationships with other people, teamwork, and getting along with other people. You can be a genius, but if you don't get along with other people and you can't work in a team, you're just an island by yourself. And our work culture right now are not islands anymore. If you can do a project by yourself, great. They're going to need that too, that you can work independently. However, a lot of the work is going to be done in teams and collaboration. So that's important. Fitting into the organization's culture. And people are trying to fit in all the time. It may be fitting in with a cool group at school, a fitting in with athletes, a fitting in with IT. Well, that company has uh, something they've already created and it's called their organization's culture. Either you want to fit into it, you think this could work for you, or you can say, you know what, they're too stiff, I don't want to be there, or they're too loose, I don't want to be there, but you're going to find a place, and if you agree to come on, then you say, I want to fit into this, and maybe I can bring something to make some changes later on. Communicating well and communicating with confidence. Speaking uh, the language of your profession, uh, communicating in a tone and a voice that's affirming and positive and supportive, all of that's important. Using whole sentences is important. It shows that you know what you're doing, it shows confidence, and it shows respect. Respect for yourself and respect for other people. Uh, personal and professional confidence. I just talked about that. So learning how to work with people, learning the language of profession, learning how to be in comfortable in your own skin is going to help you be comfortable both personally and professionally. And never, never forget that problem solving and critical thinking is so, so important because you are. IT people especially are solving problems all the time. If you stop at the end of the road and say, well, I can't go any further and I'm done, then you might be done. That growth is not going to happen. But if you're willing to work together with your team and to solve problems and, and kind of think beyond what you see, those are also things that's going to help you in your success. Okay? So I have about five more minutes. Michael, is that okay? About five more minutes? Okay, so what I want to share with you is professional etiquette in a virtual world. And guess what? This came from an article that I did for a local paper, I think last summer. These tips apply whether you're in a virtual world or not. And you'll see that they are transferable. A lot of times on your, your resume writing or your interview or application, they're going to talk about transferable skills. Well, the, here are some transferable tips, whether you are in a virtual world or in person. Here's 10. You got to be prepared. Looking that person up, making sure your uh, background, your environment is prepared. Know that, have your notes together, everything that you need before you even walk into that meeting or sit in that meeting, you want to be prepared. And that's going to take some time and energy to do, okay? Be on time. People are busy. They have other things scheduled. Sometimes their uh, virtual interviews or workshops are back to back. And if you're not ready, if you're not on time, you're going to miss some things. 
And also, you might be disruptive. You remember, manners are memorable. Well, geez, Lindsay always come into the meeting five minutes late. And guess what? They may not say it verbally, but they put it in the chat box. And that's the same thing. So you don't want that said about you. So as much as possible, be prepared and be on time. Dress appropriately. I know it's, it's really, really easy to just throw on anything or keep your bathrobe or your sweatshirt on when you're having a meeting, but dressing appropriately because guess what? I'm at work right now. I'm presenting right now. So if Michael says, hey, Juliet, I need you to do another workshop at two o'clock and it's with the president of Bremer Bank, guess what? I'm ready to present. So dressing appropriate, even in a virtual world, is important. So find that one outfit, that one shirt that you know is your uh, go-to and have it ready for when you have a business meeting. Use professional language. I just mentioned learning the language of your profession, of your craft. I'm not really all familiar with a lot of IT language. I've learned some over the years, but guess what? I know of professional development language and I use that language. Not only use the professional language, use full sentences. That's another workshop for another day. All right, be attentive. Eliminate distractions, cell phone over here. If it's on, you're gonna have that temptation to look at it as if you were in a face-to-face -face meeting. Anything around you, your dogs, your cats, your kids, whatever, could be distractions. So be attentive. People can tell when you're inattentive, even in a virtual world. So be attentive. And here's the last five. Leave your personal problems at the door. Like with any meeting, sometimes the you're in a waiting room in this whole virtual world and you may have an opportunity to talk to other people. And yeah, you're going to chit chat a little bit. But when you start bringing your problems there, that could get to be a problem. All right. Uh, uh, watch your mouth. All I can say, just watch what you say and how you say it and do not treat it too casual. All right. No gossiping. Again, you can use the a chat box. You can call a person later. You can have this online texting going, talking about other people. It could come back to haunt you. So no gossiping ever. Be clear and be direct. Sometimes the meeting may have two or three people, sometimes 10 people, sometimes 30 people. And they're going to tell you the, the protocol or the guidelines for how to interact during that meeting. But if you have something to say, because you're being respectful of that person's time and the other people in the group, you want to be well thought, clear and direct in what you say. And then number 10, fully participate, follow up and follow through. If you have a project to do, if feedback to give, then do what you said you were going to do. Be attentive during that meeting. Call the people who you're supposed to call and follow through on that. All right. And so in wrapping this up, I pulled some of your older young adults, shall I say. These are young people who are either in college or in the workplace now. And I, I asked them to share, if you were talking to your younger inexperienced self, what advice would you give you about success in the workplace and how to bring your best game? This is what they said. Participate in school-sponsored activities. Do at least one internship. So again, you're at the table, you think about internship, you get this professional development that other people won't get because, well, I'm not doing an internship, I'd rather be doing something else. So at least one, okay? Be your own cheerleader. That means that other people are not going to always be there to cheer you on. And so, you know, high five and there you go. If you did a good job yourself, then internally be able to tell yourself, I know I did a good job. Not conceited, but to make sure that you talk yourself up and you remain confident about that. Set realistic goals and expectations for yourself what you can do and what you cannot do, and ask, 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 ask questions, all right? You may know a lot, but there's always opportunities to learn. Learn the things you need to know and then ask questions about things you want to learn more about, all right? And ladies and gentlemen, as I close, or participants, as I close our time together, always say please, and thank you and show appreciation for the good that has come your way. You can do it via email, phone call, 
or you could always do the handwritten note. If you do a handwritten note, some people don't do handwritten notes, but professional etiquette, again, is about showing appreciation and respect. You show an appreciation for that person's time. You're respecting the time that they've given you and allowing them to meet you. So sending them a hand you, handwritten thank you note may make a difference between you being selected or not, you getting the date or not, you getting the job or not. So I encourage you to write a handwritten note when someone has given you a gift, if they've done something substantial, a substantial favor is Michael has introduced me to um, the University of Minnesota Career Development Department and I got the, the job or the contract. I would want to send Michael a handwritten note. It costs for more than a text or a tweet. I need to thank him personally for that favor. If they take you to lunch, dinner, some kind of special meal, if there is a career milestone, I received a promotion, got another business deal, you might want to send that person a handwritten note. And to help you get started, I have a gift for you. If you would forward your contact information to um, Power Up IT by the close of the day, of the day today, which is April, uh, April 28th, then I will send you your thank you card starter kit in the mail. Trust me, I'm not trying to stalk you and I'm not going to be sending you a whole lot of stuff, but I am willing to send you your thank you starter kit if you'd like. This is Ms. J. Manners are memorable, so always put your best foot forward and claim your seat at the table. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. That was wonderful. Wonderful. Right. Thank you for sharing that, Ms. J. Well, you are quite welcome, and I hope that the participants or the people who listen or look at this again will get some nugget of information. And this is something I charge or challenge people with. Try it. Let me know. Just say, Miss J, I don't know, that sounds kind of lame. I don't know if I want to do that. Do it in a place that's kind of safe, and then come back and tell me, how did that work out for you? It might be a great in-classroom, you know, um workshop to do where they just practice those things yeah well when we are in the classroom or if there was a group we would practice those things these are tips strategies and techniques this actually in and of itself would be almost a two-hour workshop if we incorporated the exercise in with the information that i've shared so lindsay thank you miss jay appreciate it uh, lindsay welcome. any um any questions from the audience yeah, we have one question here. Uh, someone wanted to know, are there any techniques to help remind um, rude people to follow etiquette lightly without getting into confrontation or an argument? <laughs> Woo! Okay. It's funny you should say that because with, with this COVID, that has happened a lot. It's happened on the walking trail. It's actually happened to me. It's happened in the grocery store. You have to tread lightly. Because some people, you don't know that person's personality, and it may be, I'm going to use the word contentious, they may be combative just naturally, and there may be nothing that you can do. But if you're thinking about your own health and safety and the well-being of others around you, you say, excuse me, I was waiting in line, I'm practicing social distances, uh, you know, I appreciate it. You know, I can keep my place. So choosing those words, and again, practicing before it happens. This is human nature. It's going to happen somewhere, sometime. I was on a, a walking path, and this was a path that walkers and bikers, normally it would be a bike path, but now they're sharing that space. And that person just felt like they just had to tell me that uh, I was on the wrong path. And I just said, thank you and moved over, but I did try to be conscientious of the bikers who were on the path that day. So I hope that's helpful. Choosing those words, practicing it, and knowing also that there are going to be people who you will never satisfy in that arena, and be okay to just let it go. Because if you say something back and they something say something back, we know what's gonna happen. I hope that's helpful. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's absolutely incredible advice. Um, and, you know, the thing I've learned is you don't know what people are going through. They might be out walking around just to clear their head because maybe somebody has passed away. 
you know, uh -huh. and they might just be channeling their anger. Um, but I think manners are definitely memorable. And the one thing about today's session is I will be indebted to you for all the lessons that I learned here and the reminders that we get, because it always, the most important thing you can do is treat each other like human beings. And to be yes. courteous and friendly and realize that we're all in the same struggle. We all have dogs that bark inappropriately <laughs> in the middle of a Zoom meeting. And all those things happen, right? Well, we're exercising what we call grace. And grace is a part of etiquette as well. We're kind of figuring it out together. But guess what? You spoke into it and you told me. You didn't try to hide it or fuss at the dog or anything like that. So it's a way to gracefully integrate that into what you're doing. And there's also, you know, I guess the one thing that, um, if I had a question or at least I'd interject is there's also different levels, right? And you did, yes. you hit point on that, but you know, it's a difference when you're working, you know, you're, you're meeting somebody that might be your peer, maybe a little bit older mm -hmm. then you have somebody that is already established. And then you might meet somebody completely innocuous, somebody in jeans and a ripped t-shirt while you're walking, mm -hmm. but yet you still can't let your guard down because that person might be the CEO of a consulting company that you might be a software developer for. Someday, exactly, exactly. Right? And they're yes, the three, exactly. they're, they will remember you, those first impressions. And I do want to thank you for sharing that video. That was so cool about the, the young man who put on the suit to meet his niece, yes. the niece or nephew. It's his niece. Mm -hmm. For the yes. first time. <clears throat> and even though it's not proven, but I still believe that first impressions, even when you're infants, that they see and they recall all those images. So mm -hmm. yeah, you have exactly. to always- Exactly, so if you your want table. your seat at the table, be very uh, respectful, kind, and considerate of others, follow the rules and the laws. And I just want to say this, I, I'm kind of a rule follower. However, sometimes things to be, need to be changed and there's a way to make those changes. Maybe it's not working anymore, but if you come in belligerent, combative, or demanding, people are gonna back away. But if you say, hey, you know, things have changed a little bit. Let's look at this rule. Let's look at this guideline and see if we need to make adjustments. Even with COVID, you know, at first, we didn't have to do certain things and they were figuring it out as it went along and say, well, yeah, you probably should be wearing a mask. And we start wearing masks. Yes. No, three feet is not far enough. It needs to be 10 feet. So allow for that adjustment and give grace, respect, and be willing to work it out together because we're all at the table together. Well, we, we certainly can't close on anything better than that, except, Lindsay, we do have one person that is requesting their their note card. We already have one person. Wow. It okay. It in. Yeah. Well, I'll be ready. I will get that information and you will get your packet in the mail in a few days. Okay. We actually have one more question that just yes. came in. Uh, yes. It says, what or how do you tell someone to make them aware of them rubbing their nose during a conversation that is very annoying and without offending them? <laughs> wow. That is a question because I've noticed it. Uh, Michael, did you just <laughs> <laughs> I was doing it on purpose. That. People unconsciously do that and it drives folks crazy, especially now, because I've had people to cough. Now, we live in an intergenerational world. There was a time, I think, Michael, you might remember, they told us to cough into our hand, like, like this, our fist. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, years later no that's not working cough into your sleeve or your elbow okay yes. and and now of course we don't shake and we cough but some people touch their their hand in their face i've been a part of the emily post etiquette institute that's where i got my licensure from and i was looking at a video that i'd never really paid attention before mm -hmm. this was years ago and the advice was to keep your hand below your shoulder so if you do that, you won't be touching your hair and touching your face and touching your nose. Yes, some people will do that. We have a good out now with COVID because we don't have to shake. But some people would do this and then they want to shake your hands. And then you could say, "Just I'm sorry I can't shake your hand right now, but it's so nice to meet you. Don't make it a thing and you have to move on. And if you really have to speak into it, when people do that, touch the hand, the face, the ears, they're unconsciously doing that. And a gentle reminder make them, may make them say, oh my God, I did do that. I'm so sorry. And move on. Again, if people are going to hold that against you, even in a professional environment, it gives the message, do I really want to work with you? 
do I really want to be on your team? Because if you don't allow that grace or to be corrected or someone brought to your, something brought to your attention, what about when something bigger comes along as well? So that would be my advice on that. Good point. Well, thank you, Ms. J. We've come to the end of our time. You have a wonderful day on behalf of Minnesota STEM Partnership, Power Up IT, Minnesota IT Center of Excellence, and of course, our wonderful co-host, Lindsay and moderator, and all of you guests out there. Have a wonderful day. Stay well, and be sure to have a great day. And don't forget, first impressions are lasting impressions. Therefore, manners are memorable. Have a good day, thank everyone. Thank you very much. Thank Take you. Take care. Everyone.